Hi, Megan. Hi, Kyle. Hello, Internet. Hello. So, uh, we're going to be putting together some Age of Sigmar miniatures today because my sister has never put a miniature together, but she does have a Bachelor of Fine Arts, mm -hmm. which should be good enough to be able to manage something that is ages, what, like 8 to 12 or something? Oh, no. I might have aged out of this one. Oh. Just, yeah. Is, do you have to, like, multiply it by 3? And then yeah. that's, that's when you have to stop doing cool, fun things. Exactly. I think that's a... No, right. not the fine print. Mm. Okay. Well, going over the miniatures, bring the sprues over here, sister. Shish So we have sprues. I've actually put half of these together already and primed them because later today we're doing some painting. Uh, first time my sister's a new miniature painting. Um, but we have basically some of the ground marines, which are called Stormcast, and some of these guys, which are Night Haunt. And I'm actually going to be starting in a Night Haunt army later, so you should look for that on the channel later. Uh, so we got our sprues, and they come out like these. Do you have any questions about these, Megan? Well, I'm just wondering how delicate they are when they pop out. They're pretty damn tough because this is ABS plastic. Okay. And it's actually, while we're working with it, you're going to find it's actually quite durable. Okay. Um, so you can not be that afraid of the of damaging it, although thin bits like a lot of the Night Haunt stuff, like mm -hmm. these little thin bits. Well, I'm looking at that arm, that yeah, hand right that, there. Yeah, that hand right there. Yeah. Like when you snip that off, you have to be very delicate with okay. it. Okay, that show makes you the, sense. Yeah, I'll show you the technique to how to properly do that. Great. I, so if you've got two, if you have two um, items that you need, uh, the two major items you need for uh, putting miniatures together are miniature snips and hobby knives. And hobby knives you can get at dollar stores really cheap, mm -hmm. and you can usually get miniature snips like these pretty cheap. But you don't want to get really too cheap, too cheap of them. I've got a whole bunch of them that I bought. Um, these came with a 3D printer and they're actually quite decent quality. They're made for snipping um, the FDM filament, the filament, the, the string, the 3D printer is. You, mm -hmm. you bevel it with these, you can insert it into the, the printer a little bit easier. These are called God Hands though, they're made in Japan. They're actually called God Hand, they have the, <laughs> the thing on them. And these are their consumer grade uh, snips. So those are the ones that uh, we're gonna be using. It's a nice today. handle. Yeah it's, yeah, it's better than these ones. Definitely higher quality, mm -hmm. but these will get you there because we're not actually going to be snipping up to the model. So if you bring another sprue from over there, just this guy here. Uh, we can use you this want one. You like a, the yeah, little last bit a, on this guy. Use as an example. It's a good idea. So when we're actually putting miniatures together, what we want to do is we want to snip uh, the miniature off the sprue. Okay. Like quite up the stock. From, You're almost giving an yeah, eighth inch of that. Yeah. Well, I mean a few millimeters. So sure. the idea is that we've got a lot of actual play in here. And then we kind of come in and we nibble off all the excess, mm -hmm. right? And once we nibble off all the excess, we're going to come in with our hobby knife. And we're just going to very carefully, this is not for the faint of heart or for people who are clumsy, but you basically shave it down until you've got just right. a little bit left. It's a bit of a whittling action. Yeah. There. And now at this point, we can take the back of the hobby knife on more robust parts and we can just kind of scrape it level. Okay. And what this does is that if we come in here with the snips and we automatically snip it, like I'll come in here and snip it like this. Mm -hmm. It'll be really hard to see it on camera, but you'll be able to see it. You kind of get like this distortion, almost like it's ripping the plastic mm -hmm. out and it kind of creates a cavity. So if right. you're going for really, really smooth miniatures, you want to avoid doing that and snipping right up to it. You want to shave off right. the miniature. Otherwise you're going to be standing down. It'll be a nicer in, leveling. Yeah, it'll be more smooth. So that's basically how you do the, the basic preparation of miniatures. And then we have all our sanding equipment over here. So I have these things called sanding twigs and they do load up. Like you've seen this one's been loaded mm -hmm. up a little bit, but they're not actually that bad um, price per miniature essentially. Cause what this does is it lets you come in here to like, let's say. Is it a fine grit or is this one? Are they different well, grits? One, yeah, one's got a fine grit and one's got a, a less fine grit. Oh, that's grit. much rougher grit, yeah. Yeah, so the idea is that basically you snip that off and you come in here and you take off the excess with the knife. And then, uh, once you do that, you come in with a few passes of the fine grit, uh, the, the, the rough grit, and that roughens it up. And then you come in with this, the fine grit, so you go rough grit, fine grit, and that'll smooth it down so as if the mark was never there. Mm -hmm. And the extra special sauce is this stuff. These are emery boards, nail polishing boards. Oh, they're different, okay. They're, so they're that's, that's probably the, yeah. Super fine grit. That's almost so. the buffing. Yeah. yeah. I picked this up from Gunpla. So mm -hmm. Gunpla is like the Gundam models, right? Right. So what that does is it basically polishes the all of the micro scratches from the fine grit out and right. you get these. And then I have a few other things here. I have these which are, this is um 
automotive sandpaper. Okay. So it's extra fine grit as well. Right. So this is mostly for metal based sort of or it's uh, for paint. carbon fiber. Yeah. No, it's for paint. Oh, so, is it? Okay. Yeah. So what happens is that if you get a scratch in it, what they do is they, they sand it down yep. until it's flat and they go and they fill the scratch in mm -hmm. and then they put the paint back on top of it. So it's as if it's not even there. Okay. Um, and even once paint's actually been done on cars, they'll actually go over it and buff it with this like 5,000 grit sandpaper. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's what this stuff is. And it's on just like um, swizzle straws, like swizzle sticks. So you make these yourself, then? Yeah. All right. You take the you take the sandpaper and you basically put um, wood glue on top yep. of it. And then you put the sticks down and you cut them. Yep, just laminated it down. Yeah, so these are good because like what you can do with these is if you've got a really small area, you can actually whittle them down. Oh, uh, you can make it to measure. You can make it to size. So yeah. if you've got a really fine area, you want to, to, to bevel down. But this is getting like super, yeah, super fine detail. Like if you're going for like a, like a, a presentation miniature instead mm -hmm. of a tabletop miniature, we're going to be doing a lot less we're serious doing, business today. Today's we're doing mostly more. tabletop. It's Yeah, it's tabletop standard is yeah. what I like to say. Or tabletop plus, little tabletop pop. So, uh, why don't you, <laughs> yeah, you can do that if you really feel like. I think, it, yes, uh, I think you're playing into stereotypes, you know that, right? I know, that's all right. Yeah. Oh, and the last thing you're I'm gonna need is some glue, it. obviously, once you have the miniatures. And I'm gonna be using Tamiya cement. I've actually gone through, you can see how much work I've done. And um, there's different types of glue. Uh, this stuff is plastic cement, so, th cause that's ABS. It's like the same stuff all, those, all the pipes in your house are made of. Yep. So this stuff is kind of like, uh, it's a it's a glue solvent. So what it does is instead of it actually like you would with um, PVA glue or super glue, yeah. it's just really sticky and it bonds together and it solidifies and it grabs onto the surface. That's how the other glues work. Yeah. This stuff weakens the bonds between the ABS and actually melts the ABS together. Okay, so it's fusing it. Yes, so it has a longer work time, but it sticks fairly quickly. So you'll see how this goes. So let me okay. take you through a miniature here. I'll do one of the night haunts because they're a little more challenging. Okay, there you go. They're nice and teal, which is pretty good for, I don't know if it's good for photography, but. Uh, Maybe not so much on the green on this, but yeah. Uh, I don't know, I can actually see it's pretty fine. Okay. Oh, we got a lot of shadow depth here. So basically mm -hmm. what we're gonna do for the Games Workshop miniatures, we have these little numbers along the sprue here. And okay. the copyright, obviously. Right. So this has got two bases on it. There's two of them here. Now, mm -hmm. I kind of know the trick to figuring out which ones go with which. Mm -hmm. Usually they're in segments. So this guy here is kind of in his own segment. Right. And these parts will probably all fit together. And the same for this guy over here. Okay. So it's kind of like the, all these new Games Workshop sprues are like this. Older kits are not so much like that. They're more sprayed out um, in less intelligible ways. They're more in grid patterns. Gotcha. Um, that's a lot of space for old space ring kits. So we're going to open up our little rule book here and find our, our things. Is we're going to do this by the numbers just to make sure we don't screw up. Because one of the most annoying things you can do is part out an entire sprue and mm. then be confused on which parts go with which. So we're going to do each miniature each um, by right. like, each one. So looking at the numbers here, we got 17, 15, 11, 10. So we're going to look down here and see this guy is 10 and 11 and then he goes with 13 and 12. So the ones that we're going to get. So we're going to park those out here real quick. So we're going for 11 and 10. So 11 and 10 are here. They're on the same side, like I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be really rough with this because because this is so fragile, if you get in there and you tweak it and you torque it too much, you actually might bend some of this plastic. Mm -hmm. So I'm coming in and I'm actually going to separate this from the sprue quite up a ways from the sprue injection into the detail mm -hmm. part. And we're going to just do that for all the bits and get it down to the table before we start doing finishing. It's important to note though that some places are not going to be seen, like the bottom of this base, which just plugs in here. So we don't have to be so um, delicate with those. We don't have to actually go out of our way to to make those right. as uh, clean as they need to be, right? Um, I guess identifying that comes with practice. I mean, it comes with just looking at the rule, looking at the instructions, yeah. and seeing like what parts are actually going to fit into where, right? Mm -hmm. Like the insides of this guy, there was something that was like fitting inside of him mm -hmm. that had a sprue thing. Like you plug something inside of him and it was like an extra arm that was coming out. Okay. The inside of that probably wouldn't need, it's being surrounded by the rest of his model, probably wouldn't need all that much finishing work. Okay. And the last thing we need is number 13 here. So 13 is uh, this guy over here. So yeah. it's actually breaking convention. So that's why we look at the miniatures manual. Oh, and that was so weak, that bond was so fine on the tip there that it just broke off. So now that I have that, I can actually just close this because it's going to go together okay. logically. Um, really complex things like large vehicle kits tend to not be as easy to figure out. So I'm just going to whittle down this nib like so until I have something manageable. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to come in here with my hobby knife, 
studying it. And these guys are kind of tricky because they're so pokey and fine bit and fine. You can sometimes uh, lose yourself in the details, right? You can like right. maybe cut off that when you're not supposed to. Right, right. But with enough sandpaper and a little bit of putty, you can probably fix any defects you have. So once I've cleared that down, I'm just gonna scrape it with the back of my knife mm -hmm. and kind of get rid of like the raised final bit of it. Mm -hmm. And then I'll come in later with that. So we're doing everything in stages. Right. So I'm gonna do all the first stage cleanup like this, and then I'll do all the sanding. <clears throat> And like when I'm when I'm doing this, I'm not pulling it towards my thumb. Mm -hmm. I'm not pushing with my thumb. Yep. I'm rocking with my hand. Yeah. I'm using my forearm muscles mostly. I'm doing that because I mean you've done tradesman work for years. It's yeah. Been kind of your jam, so you know that. But for not anyone, everyone with yeah. with more um, people that are more skills with a knife and stuff like that are maybe not as comfortable with a knife just yet yeah. it's you can it's a good yeah. pointer there if you, if you want to you can go grab actually another option instead of uh these sandy sticks as sanding files mm. if you want you can cut it down to a nib and then sand down with these if you don't trust yourself with knives oh yeah no so i've used those types good. of files before yeah. they're really yeah these are nicholson yeah. micro files you can find them at basically every hardware store in the in, in world um and there's variants all over the place see that i might run into here well it looks like I mean, I'm having difficulty with the definition right there at yeah. their angle, but it does seem like that might be a critical juncture that's happening yeah. there. This is his hand here. Yeah. So for him, because that's going to be glued, I don't yeah. have to worry about finishing that so much. So that's that's something you have to keep out, keep an eye out, because if you're trying to just jam through something as fast as possible, right. you can end up basically cutting off hands and things like that, or wrists and things like that. Do you have really a careful study of the... Um... It's not so bad with the strong cast. The yeah. strong cast are much thicker thicker boys. But kind of a careful study of the plan before you even start cutting it all. Depends on how familiar you are with yeah. the... the well, eye, as you eye... get familiar, though, then yeah. it gets easier, I imagine. Absolutely. Uh, so... Oh. I'm just going to come in here and the human sense of touch touch is amazing mm -hmm. and it can actually be probably the last like something might look smooth but if you're on your thumbnail over it you're on mm -hmm. your hand over it you can actually tell if something's there i can actually tell there's a little bit of a ridge there that might not seem like a big deal but when you're actually doing really fine work and painting um that can end up actually showing up when you do things like dry brushing well that makes absolute sense Usually when you get a few yeah. layers of paint in there, that's when you're going to see any imperfections. Yeah, imperfections. That's also why I use these, why I use the, um, the things. And then again, I use, um, I usually base coat with my airbrush, mm -hmm. and airbrush gets really thin base coating layers down. Right, because you don't want to really go really thick, I would imagine, or else you lose a lot of that fine detail that's in the models. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. So basically these two halves are done as far as I can recall. I don't, I'm going to do a visual inspection. Oh no, I didn't stand to this area. Okay. For demonstration purposes, it's gonna come in here. And the thing is, this has got a, a foam core to it, mm -hmm. so it's actually conforming to the shape of this. Um, right. Whereas with those sticks over there, you have to be, and like with the files, you have to be very careful about the contours you're going over because you're gonna cut in a flat contour with oh, a flat yeah. file, right? So if I'm gonna come here with a file, yep. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna push as part of the contour and move my hand around. But you're also gonna be trying to remove, uh, move it up and down the area or else you're gonna yeah. have a groove in there that you're, you don't want. Yeah, you're coming mm -hmm. along like this and you're you're rotating while you're doing it. So these files, like the circular file, that's what this is really good for. What's good at filing these kind of concave, like weird oblong shaped areas. Oh, yeah. where, the su where the flat files and the square files, like this square file mm -hmm. is much good for getting like inside of like arm guards on right. like space marines. Or into maybe like a tighter corner that. Yeah, yeah. At, like when you want to have something as flat as possible. Yeah. But once you get to that kind of pedantic level, like the really nitty gritty stuff, it stops being such a big deal. So these guys, they're just gonna sandwich together. But what I found is that um, they don't marry together fairly well because these pegs can sometimes be just a little bit too long. Mm. So what happens is that they'll have a gap. So I'm just gonna trim this down a bit. And we're gonna crack out our glue here. And this glue is, like I said, it's a solvent glue. So we wanna whip as much of it off as possible. We just need to wet the area. Mm -hmm. And that'll basically make it so that the join area, which this is gonna be, it's gonna require a little bit of eyeballing on every mini. But like the side of his head here has obviously got another side there. Mm -hmm. So there, and then the join area on there, and this kind of central peg here. 
And that should be the only area that we really need for the top of this miniature, and maybe a little bit on his hand. And I whipped most of the wet the, the water off this. Like if I bring this up here, you can see drops coming off of it, right? We don't right. want that. We want as little of this on it as possible. Because if we right. flood the area, it spreads out. Right. And then it there does be... weaken the structure. Now how if you do get it in an area that you don't want, is there a way of cleaning it up? Uh you can dab it's it's you know like how you clean up stains off of uh clothing? Yep. It's you a just, dabber. You kind of dab it yep. off. You can kind of use the uh the pressure. Right. Uh not the pressure, you use the um capillary action mm -hmm. to just kind of wick it off. But because this stuff, um, well, like you can see, it kind of overflows here. It's right. been squeezed out. We're just gonna let that settle. And is it dry. sandable at the end? Then? Yes, it's absolutely sandable. It's, it's so. literally what it's doing is it's literally weakening the molecular bonds of both of the ABS sides mm -hmm. and it's fusing them together. So that's just ABS once it dries. Once the right. solvent dries out of the of the bond, you can just go back in. And so all the it. tools that you've already demonstrated earlier are gonna work perfectly fine. You got it. I knew bringing you over here was a good idea. Uh, so basically, at this point, we need to just kind of fit this guy in here. Sure. Do you like to clean up the base? Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We're going to come in here and do basically the same thing we did with the other parts. That's okay. And this is okay. Yeah. You don't have to be as clean with the bases. I don't tend to go crazy with them um, because generally these are painted black and they're... Right. The, the base itself, we're going to do some stuff when we get to the miniatures. I was about to ask you whether or not you go and do any um, manipulation of the bases, or do you like to keep them as they've come? Well, these are interesting and unique because this set actually has a detailed base. It actually has things on it. Normally what happens, flat? yeah, it's usually just a flat piece of plastic and you have to basically make your own bases. So these, these Age of Sigmar miniatures, I don't know if all of them have it because I've just started collecting them. Mm -hmm. But if they all are like this, then it basically takes an entire step out of the hobbying process out of your way. Now, if you don't want to do that, you want to make your own bases, what you would do is you cut this nib off and you take a regular um, right. plastic base, which is also ABS. We use this solvent and glue them together and then mm. you would dress your base. You'd either make it like... Um, the idea I had, uh, you you mentioned you wanted to play Deepkin, the, the fish elves, right? Yes, of course. Yeah, so you wanted to play the fish elves was the idea. And um, for them, I was thinking, well, oh, cool. I don't know what their bases look like, but if their bases are flat or yeah. they, they have weird bases like this um, that are kind of different, if you wanted to change it up, I thought we could do like an undersea base. Of course, there would be something like debris that would be um, typical of the area that they're, you know, closely I mean, habiting. Yeah. Yeah. What I would do is I would grab a bunch of aquarium plants and mm -hmm. a bunch of sand, and I would make. Um, I would make basically like wet sand looking bases. That'd be really cool. Yeah, so it looks like it's underwater. Um, so I'm just gonna come in here, oh, I'm using the, the wrong side. I'm not gonna come in here and just buff all those scratches out. And because we're painting this and we're priming it, all that stuff is probably gonna get filled in. If you're using like an automotive primer, because mm -hmm. there's different ways to prime. I prime with the airbrush yep. and I prime really thin coats. Right. And primer is just there to make it so that the, the paint has an easier time adhering to the surface. Of course. If you're getting into miniatures painting, um, and you're looking to just uh, just to get started in it, essentially. I'm gonna get a little more aggressive with one of these. This is like a nail filing memory board. Oh, these okay. are nice and cheap. But you can is, definitely even hear the grit. Oh yeah, it's much it's much less forgiving. Mm -hmm. But I've got some ridges here. I want to get. I want to just knock down. So if you're getting into that, you're probably gonna be using like a spray can primer. And spray right. can primers are a lot less forgiving because they do have a tendency to spit. They spit, uh, yeah. there's techniques. I mean, uh, you know, basically the technique to use a, a spray can primer is one, make sure you're in a, a moderate humidity environment. Mm -hmm. So not too humid, not too non-humid. Yeah, you don't want it to kick off too fast. Yeah, you don't want it to dry too fast. And then you want to make sure you're at like, basically in like an eight inch distance away from it. And you're going to come in left to right, activate, have the spray on, spray over, activate, have the spray on, spray over. Right. And then the secret trick, the ancient secret uh, game hobby trick, is to take the liquid and put it in warm tap water um, bowl of tap water. Okay. Like lukewarm tap water. And what that does is it normalizes the temperature inside the can, because as propellant is released from the can, it right. lowers the temperature of the can and lowers the PSI that it's outputting. So it, it moderate it, it it modulates the spray. The colder it gets, the less the less force it sprays with. I've used a lot of spray bombs. I've never heard of that technique before. That sounds yeah. like a really. I'm gonna try that next time I have to do any sort of spray yeah. painting. I mean, it's it works okay, but like it's gonna chill down the thing. So it's something you gotta do in stages, right? And you don't wanna do it hot because if you make it hot, it will like. It could, well, it's compressed, so yeah. you never want to put anything compressed in It'll, too yeah. much heat. You just want to basically, ever, all the spray cans are made to be working at like 18 degrees Celsius mm. at moderate humidity because they're designed to work inside of a, um, essentially a temperature controlled like test chamber, right? Mm -hmm. 
So how does this go in? We're just going to compare the size here. I think it goes and in this way. And then we have the way. second little piece yeah. that says this header. I'm kind of doing a dry fit here just to see if it fits. Okay. Because if we don't take down the bottom parts of this too too well, what can happen, I found with these miniatures, having put a few of them together, is that they won't fit together flush. Oh. We'll have it riding on top. It'll just be held on with the little stick here. Right. So, ah, damn, these are spiky, so be careful. Okay. So I'm just going to take a little bit off there. And we can always fill these gaps in if we're really crazy about it, but this is such a busy base, it's not a big deal. So I'm going to wick off most of this. I'm just going to wet this area down. And we're just going to take a look at this and stick it in there. And there we go. Yeah, it has a very, because of the way that this is set, it mm -hmm. has a very dependent way that it wanted to go in. It wanted to go in at an angle. Right. I was pushing it in more straight down. So that's basically one miniature done, except for this little area. It looks like some sort of bird. It's like a little, um, call them griblies and other things. It's, yeah, it's like a like a dead, dead crow looking thing. Okay. Yeah. So these guys are like ghosts that were raised by a necromancer and it's like a ghost army. So everything's all spooky and ghosty. Now, how do they fit into the lore for this particular um, story? Oh, oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> That's another video. Okay, that's another video. We'll leave it for another one. Uh, we're, basically, we're essentially done here. Oh, that's really cool. So that's one miniature. It didn't take more than 10 minutes. These guys are really fast because they're they're push fit. There's only one way to put them together. Would you say that most miniatures are about that many parts to assemble? No. No. This, was this um, one like... Um, these are... These, this kit is for beginners. Yeah. So it's considered to be like... It's mono pose. So there's only one way to put it together. Mm -hmm. And it's fairly simple. So it's actually, I quite recommend if you're gonna get into miniatures painting, these kind of kits are nice because the Games Workshop kits have good detail. So sure. you can actually go and do things and, and put like a good amount of effort into making them look nice, mm -hmm. but you can't really mess up their posing gotcha. all that much. So we're gonna take a small break and we're gonna go grab another miniature and you're gonna give this a shot. Okay. All right, so we're back from our break. Um, you've been looking at the miniatures here. Yeah. Or which ones do you think you want to do? Well, this is intriguing me. I think it looks like some sort of griffin. Is it correct? Oh, I mean, we'll take a look at the instructions. Okay. There's like a doggo there. Oh, I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm going to just crack this real quick. Professional content. It's in the Stormcast section. Hmm. There we go, right okay. there. Excellent. All right, so it is a griff hound. Griff hound. Griff hound here. Yeah. Yep. Looks so, like we need 17, 19, 16, and yep. 18. and 18. So it's on this sprue here. Mm -hmm. So that's 15 there. That's 18. So get yourself some snips here. All right. You said this is 15? That's 18. Okay. I'm just going to quietly do this while you're doing that. If you have any right. questions, you let me know. Okay. All right, so you've parted out your doggo here. Yep. I'm just going to put this one to the side. You have here. all of the parts, I believe. I think so. Let's go back and just double check on that one. Okay. So um, I have this side. I have that side. You have two halves, the head. The head. All right. And the base. All right. So get your hobby knife there. Oh, and hobby knife pro tip: don't buy hobby knife blades from like the Exacto company. I bought like these hundred blades from Amazon for like ten dollars, something like I don't know, like four years ago. And I haven't even gone through all of them. I build quite a bit of miniatures. Yeah, use the use the flush side of it. There you go. Yeah, you're cutting off legs, right? So you don't have to worry about, because the feet are going to be attached to the base. Yeah, so leave that yeah. in there, obviously. Yeah, the peg is there, the peg. yeah, that doesn't have to be a problem. There you go. Without getting too close, though. That might be too close, but you can, because it's such an organic shape, you can buff it out, okay. so it's not so bad. So you kind of want to, like, you want to, again, like, kind of nibble your way in. So you kind of come in at angles. Mm -hmm. Nibble, nibble, nibble. Yeah, and that'll that'll limit the amount of stress that the plastic is under when you're snipping it. So I noticed one challenge here is that it's actually not super flat. There's a raise of the collar right there. Yeah. So this is going to be an interesting. Well, I would flip it around and, and use the tip of the knife and, and carve it in that way, right? Like this. Like thing. if there's a, I mean, you're you're talking about this kind of raised rim here. Yeah. Yeah. So I would like come in like this, 
and it would look like that way and wheel it down that way. But I mean, the neck is probably gonna cover most of that area. So you probably don't have to be that delicate about it. I'm just gonna help you out here prepping these areas. Thank you. You're welcome. Teamwork. So, I've come in here and I've used a little of the knife here, hobby mm -hmm. knife. Would I leave it at that level? Without going too further. I mean, use your use your thumb and see if it actually feels good, and then you can try dry fitting this neck. It feels pretty good, actually. Yeah. So if you dry fit the neck, like most most miniatures stuff like this is just giving things a shot, right? And then realizing when something's actually going to be shown or seen. Right. If something's going to be in like the folds of a cloak, once you actually put all the parts of the cloak together, like these night haunt guys. Uh, the Banshees are more of a, a better example. But like, well, right now I'm looking, so like it's obviously, this was Game Workshop working really well. That fitting great. Yeah. And then if you flip it over here, I'm not seeing too much distortion, but I do notice that if I go into this right in here, mm -hmm. it's someplace I would probably go back into. I mean, yeah, absolutely. You can go in there and sand it down or you can file it down a bit, but it's also this plastic in general, because it's this weird gold color, it yeah. discolors quite a bit when you cut it. So what you might be seeing is actually discoloration rather than an actual like deformation of the plastic. Right, no, I feel I see what you're saying, yeah. Yeah. Usually Games Workshop stuff comes in nice gray plastic, which is nice and neutral. But if you don't get primer everywhere, it won't actually affect the color all that much. Because if you don't get primer like underneath an arm or something, like it won't be like gold. You know what I mean? Right. So you're not gonna be able to see it. On the one side, that means that this is easier to, to find spots where you haven't primed yet. Mm -hmm. On the flip side, it means you have to spend more, you have to put more primer on because it's a more impactful color. Because primer is layered. All right. So you got the haunches on that guy. You got to chip it, chip out. Mm -hmm. I guess thinking about it now, it's been at least since you've been doing measures like this now. Started when I was about fifteen, and I'm about thirty-two now. Yeah. So that's. 17 years? Yeah. That's a, that's a bit of a time. This is one of those places where don't force that peg, take it down, oh, sorry. Take the peg down a little bit more, then try and actually. Yeah, yeah, because what's happening is that if you for if you push it together, you're gonna have a seam down the middle of it. Okay. So you cut that peg a bit. Yeah. So Should I clean up that? Mm, nah, it's fine. It'll 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 wedge itself in. I actually need to cut this down a bit too. This Tamiya stuff will actually, it'll it'll seal along the seam, so it's not such a bad uh, situation as it is with if you're using super glue. You can use super glue with this though, but the problem with super glue is that once it's set, it's set. This stuff, if you make a mistake, because it takes so long to fuse, that to, to dry, mm -hmm. you can actually pull the model part apart. And you can move arms around on multi-part kits with movable arms and you get, get it your on your skin. Chart. Is there a no, different it's fine. Thing? There's there's no. It's it says poisonous, but you just wash it off. Well, I imagine that's more ingesting sort of thing. Yeah. So you just wash it off. You're fine. Oh. Now, is this just a discoloration within the gold, or is this something you would actually go I mean, after a bit more? It's your your thumb and your fingernail, like running your thumb against it. That's yeah. going to teach you. That's going to tell you exactly how much detail is actually there. Because like your your eyes just never gonna give you the detail you need. It's humans have been able to to tell like when they run their thumb against the surface, they're able to feel bumps of like three microns thick. It's like ten thousandth the size of a hair. Some tiny little iteration. They can feel the difference between different things. I'm glad that I was looking a little bit more detail. One of the screws leftovers were in the hair, and I hadn't realized that. Yeah. With a feather, I guess. That would be. Usually you'll put something together and then give it a second appraisal. And I miss stuff all the time because there's just so many weird... But he is a pretty, he is pretty a, fierce... He's a good boy. Yeah. He's got t plus 10 to good boy. Now you just need to do that. Did you use the glue though? I haven't. That was all just dry fit. So you, that's the nice thing about these miniatures. But if you do want to pull it apart, yeah. you can do that. I like, figured I'd go and just fine. do a nice sober thought on that one. See whether or not it was all good. Uh, the problem is though that once you fit them together, it's actually difficult to pull them apart. Oh, okay. So that's that's one of the reasons why like I've I've half fit this guy together, but like getting him apart at this point, 
would require me to like put a lot of actual strain on it. Luckily, I haven't cut my nails for today. Oh no, leave that. Leave it? It'll okay. probably be too difficult to pull apart at this point. It's um, rather not chance it then. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. You don't, the thing about these is you don't need the glue. You don't need it. Well, I did notice on the box that it does, did say you didn't, but yeah. so I guess they added insurance. I like the glue. I like adding the glue because it gives extra stability, mm -hmm. um, and it can seal. It can seal seams because oh. um, it, it'll force it together. Rather it's than... also a good habit to get, and, and something good to, tr to try out. It's a good uh, experience to get uh, under your belt, basically. You can probably end up using one of the more aggressive sanding sticks on that guy. It'll be faster. Okay. I mean, you can do a, you can do probably a really rough uh, cut and then just give her really leaning into the Canadiana today. Oh, yeah. All right, so I I'm love, pretty happy I love with this your, guy. Yeah, now you just need to put him on the base. Oh, but then I guess I should use the glue at this point. Yeah, I mean, glue is pretty good. I mean, even this glue, when you do put it down, will like. So what? on the base in this case, I'm just going straight onto those pegs, right? Yeah, Would you, you trim the pegs any further? Or do you nah, think that the pegs are fine? Okay. Oh, I missed a little area here on this wall. That's okay. Okay. And like, you don't have to go and do super mirror finishes for every single thing. The, if you have a really flat area, the back of that knife will probably pull it down perfectly okay. Cool. There we go. Fit together. You kind of have to be careful with some of these multi-part base areas though because they actually overlap with one another and sometimes what will happen is that one will like kind of hook over the other and you'll have to like push it out push it out and then put it back together which is another kind of uh feather in the cap for Timia stuff oh his name is bub his name is bub yep burb yep b-u-r-b burb yep burb. all right burb. Burb. Megan, you have made your first miniature how are you feeling about that I'm pretty really good I'm pretty pretty good, good. Feeling feeling you're gonna go to rested? disneyland yeah. yeah okay uh that's what we call old proto memes all right so of, hey, these, of these things what do you want to make next well let's try one of the actual should we move on to one of the um Oh, the actual big boys? Yeah. yeah we could, do, I don't know. I mean, I kind of want to build all of them, so we can just keep keep on going. Well, how about we just go... I noticed that this one has been half done, so why don't we just continue on with this guy? Sure. Okay. So... These are, like these are Banshees. Yeah, yeah, they're the Banshees. Mm -hmm. So they'll be in the Night Haunt section. Uh, yeah, so the... Another thing to note is that the little tab that's inside of it yeah. denotes which one it is. So this one's 15 and that one's 9. Right. That one's 14. It helps you differentiate the actual uh, like cells that you're cutting out. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's like an official thing. So we've got to make two piles here because we don't want to get them mixed up. For sure. That's true. So this uh, is pile. This is this is 10A is what they say. Gotcha. All right, so we yep. have the first one there, and then the, we don't need to read the numbers on the nope. next one because it's the last one here. Yeah. I know. Look at us being so clever. Just like Cross our, of elimination. Just like our dad taught us. Oh, now I'm confused. Where do you think this ends? Right here? Uh, well, do you see the angled area? It's yeah. very sprue-like. And then yeah. you get it like... This seems sprue-ish. So if you're really confused about it, the thing you can go do is go back and look at the, the book. And the instruction book will teach you essentially where you need to go and cut. Yeah, okay. It is right to the tip of this. But I'm gonna... You said don't go straight to the tip of my gill. Yeah, it. just So cut. go like that. Middle, for for middle. something that small though, you're probably going to be okay, but you can still nibble it on the sides and then that'll probably give you a better finish. Another thing you're going to see on these miniatures is not so bad, but you're going to see mold lines and the back of a hobby knife is what you use to go and clean up those mold lines. Oh, okay. So instead of sanding those off, you just scrape them off and usually that comes off right there. They're not so bad on these because they're, they're so well designed that all their seam lines are either 
um, well hidden uh, by being jointed together like they are. I did notice that some of them are um, a wave so that you can't see like a drastic line. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then you've got areas like inside of here where I can't get the buffing rod really, right? Because I, mm -hmm. I would twist this, this lady's arm. So I'm going to try to just get that as well as I can, but not worry about it too much. Because the primer, when I go back and I prime this, will fill that area in. Mm -hmm. So I am I think I'm basically ready to, to put this lady together here. Um, I've gone and done all the, the mold lines that I can see and all the, the snip marks that I can see. Uh, except for the base. So I'm going to go in here and glue it together. So whipping, wicking off as much glue as I can and just kind of looking at the fit here. Um, she kind of gets glued into the front here because their their insides are hollow, which is kind of what makes these banshees cool looking. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to pick them up. Mm -hmm. So put that together and then she kind of gets put on to the back of her robe with her head like this. So this entire back here, this section here, that's all got to be um, essentially all of this area has to be coated. I'm gonna use the side of the brush for this. Wait, get more surface area? Uh, it's it's yes and no. It allows you to basically let it ride. Because if you try to use the tip of the brush, it'll split, right? Like if I, like if this is the back of a miniature here, a miniature scene, and mm -hmm. I push the brush on it, it splits, right? If I use the back of the brush, it just cuts the back. Because you're coming out at an angle, a cross angle, and it coats like that. Because uh, this stuff has a really nice long work time, it's just going to push together nice and firm. And there we go. One thing to note though is that this stuff, if you put a thumb into it, like if you put any kind of impression into an area that's been weakened by this stuff, mm -hmm. it'll pick up whatever you're impressioning into it. So you can put a big old thumbprint on this. If I press my thumb into here, or we put a big old thumbprint right in the, the seam area where the, the liquid is. Oh, and that's... Because it, it would spread out and then we'd kind of stick to it. Right, and then you'd have to just then deal with it after it's dried and... You had to sand it, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, this one was having tr trouble seating with it, so I took the hobby knife and I just used these like nice little areas inside of it that are mm -hmm. hollow, and I just push it the, way, the rest of the way in. Because it's delicate, you don't want to push down or you'll bend it, right? Although once you get it put together, it's kind of like a an art sculpture, like a like a, a copacetic art sculpture where it's like self-supporting. It's actually quite I'm sturdy. Actually... Once it's glued to the base, it's actually quite sturdy. I'm... I think I'm gonna get started on some of those stormcast over there if you don't mind. Oh sure. Um, do you want this one? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, because it's all those parts are here. I can't mess exactly. it up. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. So, how did you find the miniature building? Well, it went really well. I can see that. They're all done. They're all done. Didn't and it long. didn't take too long. I think that there's, you know, the learning curve for it was mm, as steep as I would have imagined it could be. Mm -hmm. Trying to identify what pieces, you know, to cut off and what right. to keep. Well, these yeah. are these are easier to build miniatures, yeah. but they're still pretty nice quality. They're really nice quality. Yeah. I like the detail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, I, because what will happen eventually is that if you do pick up this game and you do pick up the deep kin, the box that we get with that won't have any easy to create miniatures. So what they did seem like they were more of an involved miniature. Yeah, they're, they've got a lot more like, you know, they're going to have a lot more what's called posability and kit bashing. Right. So what happens is that when you have a miniature like the actual Stormcast, I'm pretty sure they come with like independently movable arms. Okay. So what you end up able to do, and they have like independent movable chests and things like that, is right. you're able to actually position their arms in different poses. Because like you cut them off at the, at the elbow, you're able to like basically sand that off and like twist like hammers and do different right. kind of action poses. And that's what where the hobby that's like the next level of hobbying. Right. So these guys though, they're nice they're a nice little entry, which is why I picked up the start. They already have thing. a really dynamic pose, but I can see where the no. how someone who gets really into it would be interested in having a bit of like um a very modular and, modularity, yeah. Well and just put a little their own individual cast to the subject. Yeah, so these guys are all done. We're gonna mm. move on to the painting section now. And this is where your strong suit is because you're uh, naturally you paint in oils like on canvas normally, right? Canvas and also panel, yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna pick some miniatures to paint here. And I've gone and I've actually primed these miniatures with a, what we have here. It's a great, them. it's a great undertone that you got there. Yeah, so I primed them gray and then I came on top of them with my airbrush and I put white here to give us mm -hmm. a bit more definition and to help us kind of figure out um, Highlights where, and, yeah, yeah, what kind of colors we want to choose. So we're going to go pop over to my color desk where I have all my colors like in racks okay. and we're going to figure out what new colors we want to paint these guys. 
So I think I'm going to do like one of these Banshees and I'm going to do like the Stormcast guy with the crossbow here. Those are the two ones I'm going to kind of think about. Okay. And then you can pick a miniature or two there that you want to kind of focus on. We're probably not going to finish them, but we're going to get started and we're going to go over the basics of like the how to's of how to do miniatures and, right. and things like that. So that's the next video. Excellent. All right. All right let's, let's go, go look at them.